Hi, it's me, your local neighbourhood hairy weirdo. Yeah, that's a good that's a good definition. I um you know genuinely, this is a bit of a weird fact about me, but I heard they were making a Lord of the Rings TV series and um I actually straight away got on the road to my agent and I said, look, I am short, I am dark haired, I would pass for a hobbit. Get get me in that TV show. Um But anyway, today I want to talk about audio drama. We, we nearly didn't have an audio drama thing. We were nearly going to talk about um, groceries, because I was like short of groceries and it was, it was great. And, um, but actually no, we're going to talk about audio drama, because I think audio drama is inherently good, and if you disagree, you are wrong. Okay, that's a bold statement, but I, I feel like I have some evidence to back it up. Okay, there are three sort of, not not audio dramas, but like, well yeah, three audio dramas. There's one called The Magnus Archives, which is a podcast to listen to. Um, these are all, I get all these through my podcast player. They've all got like RSS feeds, and so you can look at them on like Apple Podcasts and Spotify and stuff like that. We've got The Magnus Archives, we've got Unwell, and um, we've got all of the stuff that BBC Sounds have been releasing. Okay, let's start at the beginning, Magnus Archives. It's one of the first audio dramas I ever listened to, and it is so good! Really sort of humble beginnings, it's literally the one performer and a microphone. And um, it's produced by this, this sort of bigger company called Rusty Quill, and um, they make a lot of different stuff, and the Magnus Archives is just one thing they make. So from the start it had sort of the weight of production behind it, but it felt really indie and it feels really sort of... what's the word? lightweight almost, streamlined, and it's just one guy telling a story and performing a story that he's written himself, and it just feels very genuine, and it's just brilliant performance, brilliant sort of um, actual content as well. Um, beyond the sort of meta, what is it, what's it about? Um, the podcast, it's like a audio sort of horror, cosmic horror type thing. Um, it starts off where it's literally just this blood, this this guy, the archivist, uh, in a room in this archive, the Magnus archives, and he says, um, oh, this is a statement of Fred Smith when he was attacked by a big spider, or whatever it is. And then he tells that story, don't get me wrong, I don't think there are any big spiders. Uh, there are like 190 episodes, so there might be some big spiders that I've forgotten about. Um, but like it, as time goes on, it just becomes a bit less obvious horror and a bit more sort of creepy and spooky and cosmic horror type things. Um, and it's there's a couple of times when it picks up on a trope and then twists it a bit, which is something I, I absolutely love. Um, the one that springs to mind is they're like getting besieged. I think it's sort of the end of the first season. I'm not entirely sure. They're getting besieged in the archive by um, this 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 being that's like essentially a carrier for these little metal worm thing. It's, it's, a, it's a complicated, weird thing, but if you listen, you will get it, I promise. Um, and so they're all sat there in the archive and they realise that fire extinguishers are the best way to deal with them, because it's so very, very cold and all this sort of stuff. Um, and it's just the suspensefulness of like hearing them think about what, where are the fire suppression systems, are the archives sort of surrounded and contained, and it's the suspense, there's the, the actual cosmic horror, brilliant performances. I really like the Magnus Archives, and if you haven't seen it, well, if you haven't listened to it, do, do go and listen to it. It's really, really good. I can't recommend it enough. Um, the second one was Unwell, wasn't it? Yeah, it was Unwell. I, I kept getting mixed up between Unwell and the third one, but yeah, Unwell. Um, and that is, it describes itself as, um, I think it describes itself as a Midwestern audio horror drama, I think. Let me, let me check. Um, a Midwestern Gothic mystery, which is a much better way of describing it. Um, okay, Unwell is the story of uh, the main character, Lillian Harper, who goes back to her hometown to, ostensibly, to sort of see her mum and look after her mum. Because um, I think at the start her mum was in some kind of accident. I think she had a fall or, or um, I can't... See, this is the problem, is that all these, these cosmic horror type things that I really love listening to, um, they become so absurd that in the first episode it's like, oh yeah, Lillian goes back to look after her mum who had a fall and broke her hip or whatever. And now I have forgotten that first part. <laughs> but that has 
incredible performing in it. The actors in that are absolutely stunning. There's um, the main character is Lillian, who is super duper cool, um, and she like goes back to look after her mum, and then she goes to stay in her mother's sort of boarding house, which is um, I mean you know what a boarding house is it's like a big hotel, but there's other residents there that sort of come and go a bit in the first season, and then they, you sort of have a, a recurring cast of them, and um, all the characters are really good, really great sort of. What's the word? Characterization is the word I'm looking for. I was thinking description, but for a character. Characterization, that's what it is. And they have clearly defined character sort of traits, but they also have the unpredictability that comes with a normal person. For example, me personally, I, um, I would consider myself a planner. I, I, I will plan things quite far in advance before doing them, if I at all possibly can. But I would still like to do spontaneous things. I will still go out and do spontaneous things. Don't get me wrong, it's not like an often occurrence, because, you know, then it's... Can you hear that? Mon! You are right. I've got quiet now. Who else is all right? I'm back. Monica found a fly and was meowing at it, uh, presumably to try and meow it to death. To be honest with you, she is a fantastic, like, pest controller. Since we've moved into this house, I don't think I've seen a single spider. But the first time, because we got the keys and it, we went over that evening to here, and there was a spider that I caught and killed, since then I have not seen one spider in this house, presumably because of the cat, which is fantastic. But anyway, let's talk about Unwell. It's a really good podcast that sort of, it has sort of dual, it, there's lots of different horror sort of themes that I really like, and Unwell, at least from my perspective, combines two of them really well. There's the sort of cosmic horror aspect of it, which is what the Magnus Archives really excels in, and, and Unwell does that really well by sort of saying, well, yeah, all these weird things are happening, but why? And the characters were asking, well, why? Why are these ghosts here? Why? Why does any of it? And none of them can figure it out. And that's something I really love. Um, and the other thing is the sort of suburban horror of, um, for example, there's a fantastic video um, by H. Bomber Guy about H.P. Lovecraft, where he talks about, where he briefly mentions sort of the suburban horror of the Halloween film. Well, I mean, there's been loads of them, but the first one at least is the horror is what's going on in your neighborhood. If I walk from here to the shop, I'm walking past a dozen houses or whatever, what's going on in all of those houses? Do you know what I mean? And I think that horror is really played up very well by Unwell, in the sense that you meet a lot of characters, but the town is regularly described as very, very small. And for me, it's sort of... The chilling aspect of it is, is when they say, oh, we're talking to Steve or Bill or Brenda or whoever it might be, but then you've never heard about them again or since. And yeah, they probably live in the town, they're probably just a normal person. But with the recurring like examples of, of ghosts and ghouls and, and whatever it might be in this town, every character you meet, you have that fundamental sort of worry about them. You're, you're sort of listening to them speak and say their lines and stuff, and you're thinking, well, I don't... You could literally be anything. You could be a ghost. You could just be a guy. I don't know. And I think that is... It's a sort of base uneasiness, which I think is really good in horror, and I think is really, really good in, in the Unwell podcast. Well, go and listen to that. That's really good. Okay. And now, finally, uh, three. I can't remember. Was it this? Oh, I can't remember. Did I do this or, or this? I don't remember. But whatever it was. Um, all the BBC Sounds audio dramas are fucking banging. They are so good. They, um, I've listened to uh, as many of them as have graced my, my podcast player. Um, first one I listened to was the Lovecraft Investigations, the second one was Forest 404, which, oh, it's really good. Um, more recently, there was, I think it was the final season of, of Lovecraft in Investigations re recently, and Cypher is the most recent one. They released the whole series in one day, and I listened to it all in one day, and it was really fucking good. They sort of play with this sort of cosmic horror aspect as well. So maybe this should be a, a nugget of bullshit about cosmic horror, I really don't know. But they play with this sort of cosmic horror aspect as well, all of them do. Or at least all, all the ones I've listened to do. But they also have utterly stunning sort of production. 
that's the thing I really noticed, especially in the Lovecraft investigations, is there's like, um, quite often, two of the characters will be sat chatting, but they'll be in a cafe, say. But it, it's hard to describe, because imagine you're sat in a cafe, and you can hear like, um, a, you can hear people talking, you can hear somebody frying some bacon, you can hear like, a, a coffee machine going, or whatever it might be. Those are the things you'd expect to hear, and that's what you get in, in, in these podcasts. No matter what the situation is, and it's like when they're in a cafe, I hear the sounds I would expect to hear. And when they're in, um, like, I think there was one bit they were in, like a crypt, you didn't get the stereotypical drip, drip, oh, there's like, oh, it's slightly moist soil, so there's a drip mysteriously somewhere. The echoes and the reverberations and stuff, it felt like it was underground. And maybe it's because I'm wearing my big fancy headphones, but it felt like it was underground and it felt sort of confined and spooky, and that was really good. Um, Let's go through those three again. The Lovecraft Investigations is really good because, for me at least, I had no idea that they were Lovecraft stories until the end of the first season. Because it, it came up in my podcast player as The Case of Charles Dexter Ward, and I thought, oh, well, it's some mystery podcast, I guess. And I listened to it, and at the end of the season, by the end of the season, it was like, there's aliens and, and mysterious chanting, and the Doctor is in on it somehow. And, and I was like, oh my god, this is really intense. And they said, Adapted from the book The Case of Charles Dexter Ward by H.P. Lovecraft. I was like, oh shit, right, okay. Um, but long story short, each season of the podcast is sort of a adapted version of a Lovecraft story. And they've been sort of um, adapted to the modern day, obviously, but also adapted a bit so they sort of mesh together a bit better. For example, the final season is um, an adaptation of The Shadow Over Innsmouth, which is a personal favourite, and it's just really good. All the characters you meet are really good, all the twists, the turns, They've kept what makes the original stories great, and then they've improved upon that. And that is something which is commendable no matter whether it's a podcast or a film or whatever it is, and I would really recommend um, the Lovecraft Investigations, they're really good. Um, Forest 404. There's only one season, there's only eight episodes, but the sound design is phenomenal. Uh, Pearl Mackey from Doctor Who, uh, she played Bill in Doctor Who, and she plays... Oh my god, I can't remember her name, but she plays the main character in Forest 404, and... Um, her job, essentially, is like an audio archivist. She gets played a sound and she thinks, oh, well, this sound is not actually worth keeping, so we'll get rid of it. Because it's like set in the future where they realised, oh, well, each gigabyte of data has the associated cost of keeping the hard drive spinning, or whatever it might be. So it's her job to get rid of a lot of data so that eventually it's like more manageable, basically. And she discovers these pieces of audio that's like, well, this, this it like gets stuck in her head and she's like, this sounds really strange, and is there something like an encoded message, or what is it? What is it? And she like, she just like steals the piece of audio on like her future phone, <laughs> as it were, and it becomes this thrilling sort of tale of what would it be like to be living in the future where you're one of the only humans left alive? What would it be like to be living in the far flung future where robots are so advanced and AI is so advanced it doesn't even know it's a robot, it doesn't even know it's AI? It deals with a lot of really sort of extreme sci-fi concepts, and I absolutely adore it. It's really, really good. I've been, I know I've said it about all of them, but go and check them all out. The one I've listened to recently is Cypher. That's the most recent, as far as I'm aware, BBC Sounds podcast, and it is so, so good. Uh, again, bloody really good audio acting, voice acting, that's the word I'm looking for, um, from the main character, whose name I have forgotten again, I have terrible with names today, but it's a really good podcast. And it, it's like this sort of, um, it's a thriller in a lot of ways. The main character solves this puzzle, because she's like does puzzles in her spare time that she finds online and all this sort of stuff. And she solves this puzzle, and um, it's like, in, in, in the course of solving the puzzle, she, she gets given a phone number. She calls the phone number, and then that unravels this enormous mystery that she seems to be a part of, and she had no idea who any of these people were, these organisations, whoever it is, and it jumps into this immediately, just from zero to a hundred, into this suspenseful thriller. Every episode has a great revelation. Every episode has something really good. I They, they left it on a cliffhanger, sort of, uh, for the end of season one, and I really can't wait for season two. It's going to be really good. Um, oh Christ, this is a 15 minute long video. I've talked a lot about audio drama. I love audio drama. I think the medium is inherently brilliant. I think, especially with the cosmic horror stuff I like to listen to, because the thing that makes 
say Lovecraft stuff, hard to adapt, is that it's kind of definably, like a defining characteristic of, say, Cthulhu or whoever it might be, is that the monsters don't really look like anything you know. And it's the, the, the only thing we do know about them is that we can't know about them, or we know nothing at all about them. So an audio drama makes you imagine, and it makes you think, oh god, so what if what if these the, the people from Innsmouth, what would they look like? And it makes you imagine the, the sort of horror and the, and the terror, and even bits of like gore and stuff, from especially from the Magnus archives. And I think that is an inherent strength of the medium that I think, do you hear that? There's people digging up the road outside, but it's an inherent strength of the medium that I absolutely adore, and I love all of these podcasts that I've listed in this. Um, I will do my best to put links and stuff in the description. Um, it's a bit of a weird, it's hard to do for a podcast, but I'll try and find a way. Um, so yeah, do listen to these podcasts, they're really good. Um, if you made any of these podcasts and you're watching, thanks for making them, they're really good. Um, <laughs> So I think that's that's it for this week's Nugget of Bullshit in this weirdly long video. I've got to edit the video, because I film and release these on the same... What do we think of the light today? Last week the light was a bit funny, so I was going, I'm going for a bit of sideways fancy light. What do we think? I don't know. I quite like it. I've got a little monitor now, so that's good. Um, okay. I think that's the end of it. Um, I'll leave you there. Have a lovely evening. Um, eat... What are you gonna have this evening? You're gonna eat macaroni cheese. Um, eat that, be happy, be relaxed, drink some water, be silly, be kind. Um, yeah, have a lovely evening. Thanks. <laughs>